One of the things that got me into Famicom collecting was finding the oddball games. And yeah, sometimes they're pretty rough, but I'm always hoping when I play them that it'll be something special. Captain Ed was definitely something special. Doesn't mean it was good to play, though. First things first. This was supposed to be a Captain EO game. If you don't remember Captain EO, it was a short science fiction film directed by Francis Ford Coppola and starring Michael Jackson that was used as an attraction at Disney's Epcot Center. In it, Jackson played a freedom fighter slash musical act that fought against an evil empire. During development, CBS Sony lost the license. But rather than scrap the game or change the theme, CBS Sony took advantage of the fact that they were a music label, signed on a different act to support the game, and changed the logo a bit. The music group associated with Captain Ed is the super obscure Shofuk. They were a duo who wrote software for music synthesizers. And so they wrote all of the music for Captain Ed, and their one and only album was released the day after the game. The two of them would go on to be prolific composers for video games. And it turns out that their album has a bit of a cult following in Japan. I've seen one phrase come up over and over again to describe Captain Ed. Avant-garde. This is a game that refuses to fit into any easy mold. It does a lot of weird things, tries to wrap them up in a creative presentation, and yet it plays so poorly. Captain Ed feels like the kind of game that you get out of a first-year game design course. It's like they started with grandiose ideas, scaled it down to an absolute bare bones, and then piled on every single idea that they had that they could fit in. The result is something that's not coherent at all as a game, and is just about totally unplayable. Captain Ed nominally is a shoot 'em up You fly around, hit the A button to shoot the main gun, and hit B to attack ground targets with your hammer. And there's where the trouble begins. That surface of randomly changing squares that you're flying over affects your ship's performance. Green squares are normal. You can fly over them without a problem. The yellow squares cause your fuel to drain away rapidly. While the red squares block your movement, and becoming trapped inside one or behind one causes you to lose a lot of fuel quickly. If you collect this smiley face, then you can see blue squares as well. You hit those with your hammer to reveal a pickup. Now despite what I just said, the color changes with the squares are not random. Each stage has a distinct layout and rhythm to how they change. But good luck being able to spot that in this mess. All of the stages look almost identical too. They just changed the middle symbol in the panel. Another problem with Captain Ed is that since you have to be right on top of a panel to smash it, you'll really only see the pickups for a brief instant. Getting whatever comes out is nearly unavoidable. There are six things that you'll find in the blue tiles. Coins give you a hundred dollars. The E symbol restores some of your ship's energy. And the image of your ship will increase your speed for a short time. The most useful power-up is the swirly thing. That makes you totally invulnerable, which comes with the ability to move through the red squares and collect even more items. The least useful pickup is the music box, which changes the background music. And then there's the warps. The warps will do one of two things. They may take you to this screen where a character will pop out and give you a password so that you can continue. And the alternative is that you get a minigame. There are three minigames, they all take well over a minute to play, and you will find five or six mini-games on every stage. They're the primary reason that I did not get past the third stage while I was recording. The simplest of the mini-games has you bet on whether or not a card will be higher or lower than the card that the game reveals. But you have to do this four times. The second mini-game is a rather confusing one where you just hike around an area, and if you step on a blue square, then you get money, and if you step on a red square, you lose money. What each square is rotates about every 10 seconds, so there's an optimal strategy of identifying two blue squares next to each other, and then walking back and forth until one of them turns red. And then there's the third minigame, the rhythm game. Here you listen to an entire song as a guitarist taps out a steady beat, and then you listen to the entire song while you tap out the same beat. When it's done, you're rewarded based on your rhythm. 
So you've been earning all of this money, now what do you do with it? Well, there's two types of shops that you'll encounter, and you have to fly over them and hammer them to go in. At the gas station, you have to hold down the A button to refill your tank. If you let go of the A button, it assumes that you're done, and then you just have to leave. At the convenience store, you can buy several useful items. The most important one is always in the upper left, and it changes on every stage. That's the item that allows you to access the boss when you reach a certain distance in the level. The A will give you an extra life. Initially, there are no extra lives, but carrying an egg around with you means that when you die, you'll go back a short distance and get to continue. The food item changes with every stage, but it's a one-shot weapon that goes through enemies. Double lasers and missiles are limited-use weapons that do extra damage. I actually don't recommend taking them for reasons we'll get into in a few minutes. The translator will let you understand some tips from people in the password screens. The hammer will smash panels with only one hit instead of multiple. And finally, the energy pack will let you recover some health when you want to. To use items, you have to hit select to bring up this screen, and then activate them individually. You also have to hit off in order to turn anything off. You might have noticed I haven't talked a lot about the shooting in Captain Ed, and that's because it's terrible. A very small amount of ships come after you, and they're not really threats. Certainly not compared with the panels on the ground. You get a little bit of money for defeating each one, but you'll wind up making a lot more money off the Warp Zone minigames. Boss fights occur on their own screen, and for some reason your ship moves a lot faster here. The bosses have a bad tendency to crowd the bottom of the screen, and since you can only shoot forward, that makes them kind of tough to deal with. Also, their shots block your shots. So even if you save the special weapons for the boss fight, 90% of them are just going to get absorbed by the boss's shots. And the first boss is an enormous damage sponge. You're going to have to shoot continuously for two or three minutes to be able to beat them. If you do manage to blow them up, then you get to pick one door behind which is a permanent power-up for your ship. You also rescue one of your friends who is associated with the power-up that you got. Then you recover a small amount of energy and warp off to the next stage. Captain Ed has seven stages in all, though you'd have a hard time telling based on the graphics. There's literally everything wrong with Captain Ed, but maybe the thing that annoyed me the most is how much the game wastes your time. When you hit a warp panel, you're stuck watching this animation for a while, and that's assuming you don't hit a mini-game that takes forever. And when you stop at a gas station, the girl slowly walks out, then slowly fills up your tank, and then slowly walks back. I had two game overs on the first stage because I was trying to figure out the system, and then it took me 40 minutes to get about halfway through the third stage. And it took that long because everything was painfully dragged out. Fortunately, you don't necessarily have to play Captain Ed. There are several useful cheat codes. This one will either make you invincible or teleport you to the boss depending on where you press it. And using these as your name will either make you invincible or put you in a special game mode where you only fight the bosses. Captain Ed is a game that does literally everything wrong. There isn't a single system in it that makes me go, okay, that bit's fine. It's bad ideas top to bottom, which I guess is why the album is better remembered than the game. 